Um, okay, now so I would like to introduce the next speaker, which is uh, Mr. Marco Mazzola from the RCS Media Group. Um, well, the RCS Media Group uh, doesn't probably doesn't even need to be introduced. Actually, I mean, um, especially here in Europe, uh, it is absolutely one of the major major um, editorial group. Um, just a few names. Uh, just well, the well, the most important newspapers in Italy are edited by uh, RCS, uh, but also in Spain and uh, in other countries. Um, so for this reason, uh, it's really, really a big honor for us that such a big group um, and such an important uh, company is uh, using uh, CMT Build. Um, so I really want to thank you, uh, which I I see you online, Marco. I really want to thank you for being here today and for speaking on behalf of uh, RCS. Uh, I think I would just uh, let you introduce yourself and uh, go on with your presentation. Again, uh, if anyone uh, has any questions, just uh, write them in the chat box, uh, which is right below the presentation, and uh, we will get to them at the end of, uh, of, your, of your speech. Or if you, if you think that it doesn't really interrupt you, uh, you can even answer them uh, during your speech, but otherwise, <coughs> I, will, I think I'll, it's the best way is to keep them afford for the end. Uh, so, Marco, while well, the floor is yours. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Marco Mazzola. I work for RCS Media Group, and I've managed for RCS Media Group the adoption of CMD build technology. Um, most Italian people know uh, RCS Media Group, but let me give you a, a brief show to um, foreign people. Um, this is the agenda. I'm going to show you the, the reason why and the needs uh, that bring us to uh, adopt this technology, the effects, and some a few screenshots. Uh, RCS Media Group is a publishing company is a, is a large uh, publishing company. It's an international group that has uh, uh, is mainly present in Italy and, and Spain, and has about one third of its uh, income from uh, foreign countries. And obviously, as all modern uh, publishing company, uh, spread all is uh, a presence in all types of media. Uh, newspapers, magazines, uh, TV channels, apps, uh, and of course advertisement and even um, event organization. Um, these are some of our most uh, famous brands. Uh, Italian people know especially Corriere della Sera, that is uh, the most uh, sold Italian newspaper, and uh, uh, Gazzetta dello Sport, that is probably the, still the, the most read newspaper, it's a sport newspaper. But also uh, we are present in Spain where we have uh, El Mundo, that is probably the, the, the second most read Spanish uh, newspaper, and the Marca, that is a, a, a sport newspaper, maybe the, the most read. Uh, skip over. Um, stomach, sorry. Uh, what is the context? Um, we have uh, newspapers and magazines, and most of these have uh, a website. Um, we have really lots of websites. As you can see, uh, I just wrote uh, about 1,000. Really, there are more than 1,000 websites, and we have also hundreds of blogs, uh, a hundred of web application. All these needs uh, uh, physical resources, that is servers and virtual machines uh, and, uh, and bandwidth. Uh, this is just to give you an idea of the amount of components. That is the, the, the main reason why of the adoption. Um, uh, also, the, the, the technologies we use can give you uh, an idea of the context. Uh, we are talking about a web farm that is uh, dedicated to serving uh, RCS websites. Mm, uh, the typical stack of, uh, of our 
uh, web farm and web farm Excel, are a cache, are uh, web servers, uh, Java, uh, servlet containers, uh, and relational database, uh, typically distributed on different layers. As you can see, the, the technology we use are very popular, uh, very well known. I hope uh, you also know uh, about this because I'm going to drill down later. Mm, what can, uh, no, sorry. Um, so this can drive us to the, to the reasons of the adoptions. Uh, as you can uh, understand, uh, we have uh, having uh, more than a thousand of websites, you have more than a thousand file configuration, configuration files, and uh, configuration item means directive entities. These uh, uh, items have um, relation between them, and relations are often dependencies. Uh, so we have uh, lots of components, lots of dependencies, and this becomes a problem when you have to maintain a server, a service, or you, if you have to uh, move a service from the system hosting them to new systems. Uh, having so many uh, services uh, means every that every day in RCS we have uh, uh, deployments of new release and I think we can say that we implement continuous delivery we try and do it with also with uh, automation tools uh, um, some of our services the, the most uh, maintained are critical uh, they are about newspaper so they have to be up and running, and uh, and uh, to give they have to give a quick response in uh, 24 hours a day. And then it, it's important that the changes can be done safely and quickly. Uh, still, now some of the configuration changes are done manually, where it cannot be done uh, easily with the uh, automation tools. And last but not least, uh, we are moving our web farm uh, services to a new system on uh, public cloud. This uh, is, uh, gives the need of having a, a, a clear idea of uh, all the pieces and dependencies of a service to pick them up and reproduce them on a new system to move it. Um, yeah, here, the need. Which is then the first need? Having what I call a, a problem domain map. Uh, every service, a service could be considered as a, a website with, with all its related uh, web applications. Uh, the problem domain map is uh, a graph, let's say, of relations and items. What is really needed is having a map that is really reliable. There is no documentation uh, produced manually that can be really re reliable. The day after you finish to uh, to write it, or the day after you have updated, it's already uh, out of date. It's no more reliable. Um, then, what what is needed is having a tool that maps the the uh, almost real time uh, situation of your systems and environments. Uh, another another need. Uh, is uh, to being able to uh, track all the changes, especially for those that have been made manually. Because if you change something from a console, from a web console, uh, 
uh, it's very useful that who manage the systems can know that this has happened and eventually approve it or uh, discuss about it. Safe maintenance. Uh, maintaining all these uh, systems uh, and services has to be done in a safe way. Uh, safe means that you uh, should know exactly where you are putting your hands on, that you know that there is no hidden pieces you are forgetting, which has been the solution, uh, adopting an asset manager. Uh, using it uh, in a, maybe in a particular way, uh, it's not a, a software and hardware discovery. It's um, inventory. It's uh, um, discovering and uh, tracking software components and system components. Uh, these components are defined and configured in conf software configuration files. And this is maybe, it's not typical uh, of all uh, out of the box uh, asset manager. Um, to have the famous reliability I talked before, um, all these items and relations, we wanted them to be discovered automatically. Uh, we started uh, choosing three main ways. Um, the first one is about our typical uh, web farm stack, that is uh, uh, Apache configuration files with its uh, uh, virtual hosts and relation with uh, uh, Tomcat backend applications. Tomcat configurations with its uh, web application and refer to uh, database, relational database. This is the first stream. Uh, the second one is about our ongoing project of migration to public cloud. In our case, we are moving to Microsoft Azure. And also on Microsoft Azure, you can create uh, uh, many kind of uh, uh, items and the entities, virtual machines, disks, IP, load balancers, all these, uh, uh, um, these entity can be created manually or can be uh, created uh, submitting uh, JSON files. That's what we usually do. Uh, anyway, um, to have an idea of, uh, of the problem domain map, we also uh, decided to um, uh, cover uh, with, the, with the asset manager also this context. And finally, what is the, uh, one of the typical usage of an asset manager that is uh, um, uh, a simple inventory of the actual on-premises physical machines, but also about all the virtual machines we have on-premises and in cloud which have been the requirements we gave us and we had. Uh, I said reliability. Uh, we have to uh, trust the information, else they are almost uh, unusable and even in some cases uh, counterproductive. Uh, uh, reliability. Uh, we decided that uh, most of the information or, uh, had to be discovered with the automation automatically. We, the, this means uh, with the software. Uh, and uh, to keep these information reliable, these cannot be modified manually. This can be only be fed by connectors, software connectors. Other information can be added, and also relations can be added course and populated uh, manually where this information cannot be fed uh, easily or cannot be even fed in any way to the system. And uh, also uh, this data has to be trustable and then uh, have to be updated. They have to be up to date 
uh, and frequently submitted to the systems, to the CMDB. Uh, another of our need is customizability, uh, a, a, a typical out-of-the-box uh, asset manager uh, will never have the type of items we needed and the types that probably we will need in the future, the new configuration we are going to do on, the, on this tool. So the, the, the software uh, to be adopted has to be um, open, let's say, has to be customizable um, for the item types and for the integration that had to be uh, developed custom to integrate with other software or other data sources. Uh, another requirement we gave us is about um, the, the approval of the changes. So uh, all items are fed their properties to and any change in these properties or in the existence of the items and, the, and their relations is tracked and is notified in an eventual change. And this change had to be approved. It's very simple. In our case, the uh, process uh, uh, the process component of the usage of CMDB. We had just a, a single step approval. It can be approved or not. Uh, what we, uh, uh, for our experience, we, we know that it has to be considered in the adoption of technologies, the learning curve. Uh, it's important because uh, even a, a very good technology uh, if it has a, a, a long learning curve, uh, you have the risk that it will not be really uh, adopted or will not get popular in your in your company because of the the needed time to learn it or and to even to start learning, especially for the start. Uh, last but not least, uh, the cost is always important both for the running costs and for the, the adoption project. Uh, all these reasons bring us to CMDB. CMDB, it's, a, it's an open, open technology. It's, a, I think it has a, a very good uh, architecture and, and good interfaces. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's good for interoperability with uh, our system. And uh, of course, uh, it's not that exact expensive as most famous uh, enterprise market uh, competitors. Uh, we decided to adopt the ready to use uh, uh, version that has a, a, a good out of the box uh, hierarchy of uh, items that covers uh, most of the typical uh, IT assets and uh, uh, that we all, of course, we extended, but it's demonstrated to be a very good baseline to start from. Which have been the, the steps? Uh, very simple, uh, in short time we did it. Uh, installation the extension of the out-of-the-box uh, data model and hierarchy. Uh, then uh, we just write a few scripts to expose to see and build only the configuration information needed and to hide some for privacy policies, uh, some other type of information like uh, passwords. And uh, then uh, Technoteca developed for us the connector to cover the free streams uh, I, I said before. Uh, the approval uh, process has been configured very quickly because it's very light. And then a few reports. Uh, the effort and elapsed the time has been planned uh, in, uh, in two months and has been met. Uh, let me show you what what uh, what could be seen on on our system. This is a, 
uh, I'm sorry, I had to obfusk some uh, information. Anyway, this is a, a graph, a typical graph of, a, of, a, of one of our web services. Uh, you can click on these items and drill down, hide what, what is not uh, uh, interesting. Uh, in this case, you can see a, a, a couple of uh, websites. This is a, a load balancer that balance uh, backend uh, request to a couple of uh, Tomcats. You have web application deployed on Tomcats. Uh, this is a, a logical view of the, of the web application the entity. It's database and the database server that hosts the, the database. And obviously, clicking on this uh, object, you can have uh, shown all the properties you, you, you need it. You can delete and you can, anyway, drill down, obviously. Uh, uh, it's also possible to, to have this information in a, in a table, table way. I have uh, another graph. I'm sorry, it's a bit small, but uh, this is uh, about Azure. It only uh, changes the, the types of, uh, uh, of items you have uh, on cloud. You have ID, balancers, uh, and uh, virtual network, network interfaces. And uh, uh, that's all. I think it, it's been an interesting project, uh, a very useful tool that we are going to invest on more than what we have uh, done uh, since now. Uh, some uh, additional benefits that uh, we didn't await. Uh, just writing the, uh, the connectors, uh, the, the connector written by Technoteca had also logs. And in these logs, uh, they, uh, the, the connectors uh, write uh, what they consider inconsistencies, that is, uh, uh, rules. Uh, and naming convention and uh, best practice, uh, we told the Technoteca were not, when these were not followed. And uh, this way we could uh, clean up a little our configuration and discover even uh, unused uh, existing items. Uh, the learning curve is uh, so short that during the, the cloud migration, uh, uh, project that is ongoing, uh, even people that have mm, not more than a minute of, uh, of training could uh, use the tool uh, autonomously and uh, drill down entities, make searches, uh, and export even uh, information to manage with uh, um, Excel. Uh, I think that that's all. Thank you for your attention and I want to thank you also uh, Technoteca for its uh, helpfulness in the, during the, the project and for their uh, very good approach to the project to the project well Marco Marco we we thank you very much really um there's just a quick quick question uh, mr. Barkley um, is asking can the system automatically collect the relationships between applications and servers and uh, how? Yes, of course, it, it's important. Having just a list of items would be unuseful. Uh, what is needed is having the map. The map is a kind of graph. You need also relations. A relation cannot, must not be uh, fed manually. This means that writing the connectors, we uh, we identified some uh, uh, unique keys, let's say, about the items. And uh, uh, we then uh, finding these unique keys in different types of configuration files, we could relate automatically these items. Just, uh, just an example for who knows uh, uh, Apache and Tomcat. In, uh, in Apache configuration file, you have virtual hosts, and virtual hosts you can have directive that refer to what is usually called workers. These workers are uh, balanced clusters of Tomcat. These uh, th these have unique keys. 
these unique keys are referred in other files that have been fed to the, the CMDB connectors. And uh, following this chain, it's been possible to, uh, uh, to reproduce and insert in the CMDB also the relations. Obviously, this has been done because of uh, custom connectors. And custom connector can be done because uh, it's very open, this software. All right, yeah, well, that's uh, yeah, very good. And that this also, also um, links to the, the previous question we, we had. Uh, well, Marco, I really want to thank you, especially because I know you spent uh, part of your holidays uh, to work on this presentation. So, well, that's a double, double thank you for you. Uh, it's really nice to see that uh, people are so uh, appreciating our tool that are even willing to spend uh, some part of their holidays uh, to work on, on their presentation for, for the CMD build day. This is something we really appreciate and uh, we thank you. We thank you very, very much again. You're welcome.